Every single day waking up, you step out of bed, your ankles are killing you, your knees are killing you, you reach for a cup of coffee in the morning, your elbow's popping and it's hurting. Pretty much every single joint has pretty bad pain, especially in the morning. It's really frustrating watching yourself decline when you know that you could, if I didn't have this disease, that I could be on a much different physical level. Living with XLH is sort of a silent pain. Um, I often wake up in the morning, ready to start my day. I step out of bed and then sort of crumple over. I do my best to ignore it and try to be as active as I can. But every time I brush my teeth, I discover a new cavity. I have four molars missing right now. It's honestly hard to keep up with the amount of dental work I need. My name is James Cooney. I'm sort of a jack of all trades. I was diagnosed with XLH probably when I was about seven or eight years old. My name is Sean Cooney. I work in film and real estate, and I was diagnosed with XLH or hypophosphatemia when I was about five years old after I had bowed legs and pigeon toed, and my brother also had a similar condition, so we decided to test for phosphorus levels, and we found out that I had very low phosphorus levels. X-linked hypophosphatemia, or XLH, is an inherited bone disorder, and it's a problem with the body retaining phosphorus. And this low phosphorus results in problems with bone growth and problems with bone health that start in childhood and last throughout the lifespan. The root cause of XLH are mutations in the PEX gene. PEX is important because when it's lost, FGF23, which is a hormone, increases in the body. That increased FGF23 results in the kidney not holding on to phosphorus and vitamin D not being appropriately synthesized. So when the bone doesn't have the appropriate amount of phosphorus, it becomes soft, it bends, it breaks, and it hurts. I was in cast for about a year when I was four or five years old. And I remember walking around the house in them with crutches, uh, going outside. Time, a lot of kids would be learning how to really run and ride a bicycle. I was learning how to walk with crutches. I didn't really think of it at the time uh, as anything that was too abnormal because my brother also had it. Um, but then I realized it was when uh, in school, you know, I was one of the very few kids that were in a wheelchair or in crutches for most of elementary school. Luckily, around the time that we realized my little brother, Sean, also had these problems, um, that's when I think my mom got the hunch it was genetic. She realized maybe there's something bigger here and uh, took us in for uh, phosphate testing and we discovered that we have hypophosphatemic rickets um, and that it's X chromosome linked and that it's something that we carry, we will pass on to our kids and we inherited from our, uh, from our mother and from her parents and grandparents. So XLH is an inherited disorder. So it usually presents in childhood, and, but its symptoms and its effects reach far into adulthood. So it has effects throughout the lifespan. It illustrates how sometimes you don't know you have an inherited disease in the family until several generations actually have symptoms. This is a genetic disease, and in fact, their mother was living with the disease for 30 years and didn't even know it. And then when they looked back in their family tree, they were then able to appreciate that their grandmother and great-grandmother were affected by this disease. So it was a big consideration for their family when it comes to family planning. For Sean in particular, when he and Susie found out that they were having a baby girl, we knew that that baby girl would have XLH so they could establish care with a doctor that knew about XLH and they could start to plan for the future for both themselves and for their baby girl. One of the major concerns of mine is my ability to interact with my kids. Uh, I have a daughter now, I plan on having a few more kids, uh, which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, but with 
my daughter, I have to be very careful that I don't drop her because it'll happen just in an instant. Your legs will give out and, um, and that could be very dangerous. Uh, and when I become older, uh, in a decade from now, maybe more, I do, I want to be able to throw a ball with my kids. And um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that. You know, I might, I might be wheelchair bound again. And that's difficult. So if you suspect that you may have XLH or a family member may have XLH, you need to ask to be tested with a serum phosphorus. It's a simple blood test. Unless the doctor thinks about it and checks it off separately, it will not be tested in the chemistry panel. Since XLH is a rare disorder, it is very important to find a physician that can diagnose and manage XLH. These types of physicians include pediatric and adult endocrinologists, geneticists, and nephrologists. I think it's very important to find a doctor that knows what the condition is because they won't understand the whole body impact that it has. They might not get why certain things hurt or why you're experiencing the pains you are unless they really understand the condition. This is a chronic disease and it just progressively gets more and more challenging. And I think it's really important that people just do not ignore it. It's important to maybe connect with the network of people to understand the other things that people are experiencing because you might start to experience those as well. We may be bow-legged, pigeon-toed, knock-kneed, bad teeth, whatever, but in reality those are symptoms of a chronic, lifelong genetic condition that you're going to have to manage for the rest of your life. There are several excellent resources available to patients with XLH. There's the XLH Network that can be found at xlhnetwork.org. In addition, for a number of rare disorders, there's globalgenes.org and ultrarareadvocacy.com. I think knowledge is power in this case, and really, it's, it's not too hard to comprehend, but the implications are so drastic when you don't know what this condition is and you don't know how to treat it that it almost seems crazy to not at least check for it and for doctors to know what it is.